A very, very good morning to all of you. A very warm welcome to our morning prayer service today. May I invite us all to stand? Our Lord who is rich in grace and mercy, who is the shepherd of our lives, shepherd of our souls, he is with us, and the Lord be with you. We say together the colic for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, The Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Let us sit or kneel as we are able as we think about the events of the past week in particular. If there's anything that we need to set right before the Lord, may we take this opportunity to do so now. Together we pray, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought, in word, in deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Receive now the absolution. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's forgiven people, shall we all stand together as so I hand the time now with uh, Elvin and his worship team to lead us in time, praise and worship. Morning, church. How's everyone today on a warm morning? A warm welcome. Are we ready to praise the Lord this morning? Amen. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength. Of my heart and my portion forever, forever. Who am I in heaven? Who am I in heaven? But you. There is nothing on earth I desire but you. My heart and my strength. There's only one truth that always will prevail. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever, forever. One more time. Who am I in heaven? Who am I in heaven? heart and my strength many times they fail but there is one truth that always will prevail God is the strength of my heart 
God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever, forever. Indeed, Lord, uh, we come before you this morning, Father Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for guiding us through the week, Father Lord. Lord, as we struggle, Lord, to understand what's going on around us in the world, as we struggle with the problems we face in our work and our lives, Lord, we're reminded that um, in the midst of the storm, Father Lord, and uh, as the disciples were at sea, and when everyone else was panicking, Father Lord, and uh, Jesus was come on the boat, Father Lord, Lord, teach us, Father Lord, to quieten our hearts, Father Lord, and just to focus on you, Father Lord. Teach us, Father Lord, to, to keep still, Father Lord, and just to look upon you, Father Lord.
to your presence past the gates of praise to your sanctuary till we're standing face to face look upon your continents see the fullness of your in this place ever father you are worthy of all praise to you our lives we raise you are awesome in this place mighty God you are awesome God God, for our Lord. Lord, we pray that uh, as we face troubles which are too big for us, for our Lord, as we face problems that we think that we have no solution, for our Lord, Lord, we pray that you teach us, for our Lord, that we come before you, that we put our problems before you and we bow down before you, for our Lord. For indeed, Lord, you are our Saviour, for our Lord. Where would I run to the throne of mercy? Where would I kneel at the cross of grace? How great the love, how strong the hand that holds us. Beautiful, beautiful. So here I bow long. So here. To lift you high, Jesus, be glorified in all things. All my life, I am yours forever. Yours. There is a king. Scars of healing. There is a son who came in grace and truth. How great the love that carries us to kindness.
Thank you, Lord, that you are a faithful God in whom there is no shadow of change. And all that you promise, Lord, you keep, Lord. You're a promise-keeping God. Thank you that you deal with us according to your loving kindness, according to your mercies, which are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Bless us, O God, as your people, that we may in turn be an instrument of your blessing to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated for the scripture reading. You just need to do the sums this morning. I mean, the sum. First reading is Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I, in, I entreat Euodia and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, Help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading for this morning is from Psalm 39. To the choir master, to Jeduthun, a psalm of David. I said, I will guard my ways that I may not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle so long as the wicked are in my presence. I was mute and silent. I held my peace to no avail and my distress grew worse. My heart became hot within me. As I mused, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. O Lord, make me know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few hand breaths, and my lifetime is as nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as a mere breath. Surely a man goes about as a shadow. Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. Man heaps up wealth and does not know who will gather. And now, O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. I am mute. I do not open my mouth, for it is you who have done it. Remove your stroke from me. I am spent by the hostility of your hand. When you discipline a man with rebukes for sin, you consume like a moth what is dear to him. Surely all mankind is a mere breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am a sojourner with you, a guest like all my fathers. Look away from me that I may smile again before I depart and am no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Let us uh, bow our heads and uh, commit this time to our Lord in prayer. 
Father, use my mouth to speak forth your words with clarity, with authority. And may your spirit give us wisdom to understand and help us to think about the brevity of life, to think about all that is wonderful and good, to think about all that you have called us to do, that we may obey you in Jesus' name. Amen. Life is short. Enjoy while you can. How many of you disagree? Raise up your hand. So there's only 2%. Okay, let's try this once more. Life is short. Enjoy while you can. How many of you agree? Raise up your hand. Ah, now we have more, right? You know, in the morning at 9 a.m. service, we practically have no one that puts up their hand. <laughs> yeah, are oh, you okay? And then there's only one more that disagree with the statement. Yeah, so at least a few of you agree with the statement. But however, I think uh, some has to say a lot more about this statement that you can, uh, we can analyze later. Okay, you know, my son has a better version of this statement. He says, life is short, so don't make it shorter. <laughs> you know, recently I came across an article titled, Why do people say life is short as a reason to do things? The writer hears this, the statement, life is short, enjoy your life and all that from all his friends who are at that particular moment perhaps enjoying themselves, whether they are partying, going out to the beach, buying something perhaps ridiculously beyond their means, think Lamborghini, or locking themselves up in the house, in the room, and spending all their time building something or doing something that they think is worth that time. And this is what he found. He says, it boils down to life which is all about priorities. We only have a limited amount of time on this earth, so we must prioritize what is vital to us. And that is why some people spend their time on activities that bring them joy, while others focus on building their careers, and yet others chasing after medals, awards, or fame. In other words, success. And for some people, the life is short excuse is a way of justifying taking risks. They think that if they tr do not try new things or take chances, they will never know what they can achieve. And while there is certainly nothing wrong with that line of thinking, it is vital for us to remember that not every risk, not every risk is worth taking. Sometimes it is better to play it safe, right? And enjoy instead of betting everything on a chance that may not pan out. And I agreed to that. Think about many who lost their lives while trying to capture the most Instagrammable photo at great heights and perhaps even doing dangerous stunts. You can find all this a lot on YouTube, online, you can see. Besides that, there are also new stories and, that illustrate the brevity of life. And that often reminds us of the unpredictable and fragile nature of our human existence. For example, reports of natural disasters such as earthquakes, tsunamis, and hurricanes. We all know such natural calamities can result in a significant loss of life in an instant, just like a snap of a finger. And similarly, tragic accidents like plane crash, train crash, or car accidents can claim multiple lives unexpectedly. And all this highlights the unpredictability of life's duration, isn't it? 
sickness and diseases. They can come and also claim lives unexpectedly, whether they are rich or poor, or whether they are young or old. If you remember when the COVID-19 pandemic hit the world in 2019, countless of lives were lost. And after three years of citing more, I believe many are still reeling from the pandemic and trying to live and move on to live their life with COVID. All these news and stories serve as a poignant reminder to each and every one of us that life is fragile and very uncertain, isn't it? The question is, how can we make the most of it? I believe none of us would say, I like to waste my life. I have too much time on hand. No matter how long a time God gives each and every one of us, I believe we all should make it count for God. But how can we do that? The passage this morning actually shows us the importance of thinking about life, death, and eternity. And this passage here this morning in Psalms 39 reflects David's struggle with the brevity of life. You know, many scholars view Psalm 39 as a continuation of Psalm 38. In the preceding Psalm, David is seriously ill and is facing the prospect of imminent death. And in this Psalm, as might be expected following such disease, he is contemplating life's brevity. You know, I think most of us would say, right, if we think we are at the, our life's end, we want to think about life, think about death, and think about eternity. In Psalm 38, the author is silent before other people. He says, I am like a deaf man who cannot hear, like a mule who cannot open his mouth, whose mouth can offer no reply towards his enemy, towards his adversity. This can be in terms of not just enemy, but illness. This theme is picked up in the opening verse of Psalm 39, verses 1 to 3. In fact, there are also several Hebrew words that are repeated in both Psalms. For example, my hope in verse 7 is similar to wait in Psalm 38, verse 11. The word stroke in verse 10 is the same as plague in Psalm 38, verse 11. And David has no one else to turn to in both these Psalms that he says and he has a solution where he turns to. And his answer is simple and yet profound. And I believe it's not only just these two Psalms, but the entire book of Psalms that we read those that are written by David. And here, his contemplation and his solution to the brevity of life is, life is short. Make it count for God. The person, Jeruthun, in the Psalms title, was one of the musicians appointed by David to lead public worship. If you read this in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 16. And in Psalm 39, Psalm 39 is a lament psalm and a hymn used in ritual services such as funerals. You know, as I was preparing for this, I was contemplating whether I should use one of my wake sermon. <laughs> but it's really, yeah, we wake everybody. Is. <laughs> but it's apt, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that, this is why this psalm is used in those uh, funerals as well. Now, so we will look into deeper into this uh, psalm, right? Uh, we will not divide it according to the Selah, which you see there, right? Which is a pause for meditating or musical notation at verse 5 and 11. Uh, I think we can divide it into four sections. First, from verses 1 to 3. It talks about the struggle to guard one's words and that 
and the resulting inner turmoil for doing that. And second, verse 4 to 6, David is contemplating of the brevity of life and human frailty. Third, verses 7 to 11, a prayerful response. He prayed to God, seeking God's forgiveness and deliverance. And lastly, fourth, verses 12 to 13. He continued his prayer, the prayer for relief and the recognition of life's transient nature. <clears throat> let, us, let us look in detail. Start, let's start with the first section from verses 1 to 3. You know, the first three verses are like an introduction explaining the circumstances of the psalm's composition. But let's look at verse 1. In this verse, King David expresses his determination to be mindful of his actions and words. He resolves to guard my ways, which means he intends to be careful about his behavior and his conduct. Specifically, he mentions here keeping his tongue from sin. And that indicates that he will refrain from speaking or engaging in sinful or harmful speech. And of course, we see also the motivation for this commitment. It is because of the presence of the wicked. David recognizes that when surrounded by ungodly or sinful individuals, there's a temptation to respond in kind or to act in ways that are contrary to God's principles. Well, in their defense, right, you would perhaps do the same. All right, want to speak the same thing, speak the same way. So David decides to exercise restraint, and that's symbolized by putting a muzzle on his mouth. Not that he do, does it literally, but you know, he wants to keep it in check, in control. He will control his speech and avoid engaging in sinful talk. Or, worse yet, complaints. Complaints about his suffering, which may put God in a bad light because the wicked people will never understand the spiritual things. In verse 2, David explains the consequences of his silence. While he was determined to be silent, to be mum, to keep silent, even from saying anything good or positive, he experienced a deep inner turmoil or distress that intensified. And this suggests that his silence in the face of the wicked or sinful company did not bring him the peace or relief he had hoped for. Instead, it's the opposite. His inner distress grew. And this verse highlights the difficulty of navigating situations where one must choose between speaking out against wrongdoing and maintaining silence. And I'm sure we all come to such uh, a situation before, right? It is really, really very hard. It is really a test of not just your courage, but your faith in God. Yeah. So in verse 3, as David remained silent and meditated on the situation, Look here what he says. His heart became hot. Right? Not that he's feeling something warm and nice, but hot, burning. Right? Suggesting that his inner turmoil and emotions became increasingly intense. As if a fire burned within him. And he decided to speak up. Well, I think. All of us, when you are so emotionally charged, we want to speak out, right? All right? Whether is it good or bad, uh, I leave that to you to think about it. <laughs> yep. But when we are emotionally charged, we want to speak up. The first thing we do is speak, right? So, let's, uh, yeah. so David here, he acknowledges that he eventually spoke with his tongue. But before we speak out, when we are in our emotional high. Let us see what he says here in verse 4 to 6. He speak to God. He prayed to God. He prayed to God asking for a reminder of his own limitations. He's not asking God about, God, 
Can you tell me at which point in my life that will be my end? Or how would I pass on from this earth? Instead, he is asking God to help him with humility. He used vivid imagery such as comparing life to a hand breath, a mere breath, to emphasize its brevity and fleeting nature. I believe here, David knows that life is truly short and it is fleeting. You know, the word hand breath in the ancient world is a unit of measurement, much like our ruler, right? We talk about five, one cm and one mm, right? For hand breath, it is the bottom of the hand here, all right? It is almost equivalent to our four fingers, right, if you measure it down. But in those days, they, of course, they don't have ruler, right? right? Uh, measure, how do they measure? Of course, they use hand, use arm to measure, right? So, of course, sometimes it's not accurate, lah because it depends on each person, right? How, how big your hand, how long your hand is, and all that, right? Yeah. So you want to do some trades with uh, Reverend Mock, uh, be very careful. Uh. His arm and his hand is bigger, much bigger. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the third section from verse 7 to 11. David shift his focus from the contemplation of the brevity of life to a prayer in response. But he turns to the Lord and affirms his faith and hope in God. And this is a wonderful demonstration of faith. Right? When you face with difficulties, when you face with challenges, when you face with your own sin, when you face with your suffering, turn to God. Turn to God. What he do? He pleads for forgiveness and deliverance from his transgression. A transgression is a breach of something. And in this context, it means violating God's covenantal law. A person could break God's law by failing to live up according to God's law. Although David does not specify how he had acted contrary to God's law, he does make it clear that he longed for God's forgiveness and expressed a desire not to become the object of ridicule by foolish individuals. And so David is silent because he knows his suffering is from God. Because God disciplines. Right? And I'm sure you will agree with me that suffering is never pleasant. Do you agree? Oh, it seems like very pleasant. <laughs> you want? <laughs> but... The pleasant thing is, it is for a good purpose. Suffering is never a pleasant thing, but it can have a good purpose. Not all negative experiences are due to our mistakes, but when it is part of God's response to our sin, our willful Transgressions, suffering brings conviction and a desire to repent. Yes, suffering is not pleasant, but it is purposeful. And in David's case, it helped him to turn to God and pray for relief from the stroke and the hostility of God's hand. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 to 7 reminds us about God's discipline. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves. He chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons, as daughters. For what son or daughter is there whom his father does not discipline? Right? And in describing God's rebuke of sin in verse 11, David uses the imagery of a moth. Moths and other insects can quickly destroy fabrics and other possessions. Just as suddenly and surely, 
the Lord can consume what is dear to a man. This is a good reminder for us to check our heart. What is dear to us? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. David already realized that heaping up wealth contribute nothing to eternity. And I hope it is also a reminder for us that earthly treasure remains behind when we pass on from this earth. But eternal treasures awaits the faithful servant of God when he enters heaven. The final section from verse 12 to 13. David here pleaded for the Lord to hear his prayer and not be indifferent to his weeping. David acknowledges his status as a foreigner and a stranger. And he said, For I am a sojourner with you, a guest like all my fathers. We can find something here very significant of what he said. David identifies himself as a sojourner, not alone, but with God. He and God were strangers together in a hostile world. And that reminds us that while we are living in this world, in, on this earth, this is not our home. We are only sojourners traveling here. One day we will go back to our real home. Right? And this perspective was echoed by those heroes of faith written in the book of Hebrews, such as Abraham. Abraham was the first stranger and a sojourner. And all his children and those who inherit such a faith must also say the same. Faith cannot find a home on this side of eternity, but awaits a better home, not built by human hands but by God himself. This helps us to look forward to the home that is not built by human hands, but one that God himself prepares for each and every one of us who faithfully trust in him, who faithfully hope in him, and finally, David asked God to look away from me that I may smile again before I depart and am no more. You know, upon the first reading of this particular verse, this statement here, this may seem strange, right? Why David say, God, please look away from me. Don't look at me. Look away. But if we read it in light of the previous verses, right, we see that David has already expressed his confidence that the Lord is his one and only hope. And he has repented of sin and asked to be merciful. And this request connects to the idea of being under God's holy and righteous judgment. This request is the anticipation of God's grace to him, a renewed sense of peace and confidence. He knew he would smile again with joy in his heart if the Lord would remove his discipline. He understood that life is fleeting and before long he would depart this life and be no more. Be no more here does not mean cease to exist. Rather, it means passing on from earth to heaven for David. And what does it mean for you and I? Can we say also the same, passing from this earth to heaven? David wrote in Psalm 23, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So what is the lesson here? Simply put, 
Life is short. Make it count for God. Right, sisters? Psalm 29 asks us to think about the brevity of life. You know, as one pastor puts it, the world, by contrast, does not like us to think much at all, especially about things such as life, death, and eternity. Thinking about them spoils the world's fun and make us harder to manipulate. How about the flesh? The flesh is unable to think about eternal matters, at least on a spiritual level. It cannot understand because they are spiritually discerned. Unless you have the Spirit of God in you, you have the Holy Spirit. Unless you have the Word of God in your heart. How about the devil? The devil will do everything to keep us from thinking, especially about the meaning of life and the fact that we must spend eternity with God in heaven one day and not spend our time or our eternity with the devil. And therefore, the world, the, world, the flesh and the devil conspire to keep us amused or entertained and to be in bondage to all of them. Isn't it a wonderful reminder Psalm 39 gives us? The enemy is out there prowling and trying to devour each and every one of us. The world, the flesh, the devil, they will never stop until they catch hold of someone. Psalm 39 is a re rebuke to such folly for people who are bondage to entertainment, to be entertained, to be rich, to enjoy life here. Psalm 39 wants us to think about the brevity of life so we may apply our hearts to wisdom and use the time we have and make it count for God with purpose and in faith. As we think about our lives, let us remember that our response matters. How we choose to live our lives in light of this brevity is what truly defines us. I believe we have a choice. The choice we make to embrace life's fleeting nature with purpose and in faith. And concerning purpose, let us resolve to live with intentionality, to cherish every moment, every relationship, and every opportunity that comes our way, to make a difference in the lives of others, and to make the difference in our lives. And concerning faith, let us place our trust in the God who holds our days in His hands, when we seek God's guidance and understanding, we navigate life's challenges with a divine compass. We will find strength in our weaknesses, hope in our despair, and purpose in our days. To conclude, as a respond to the brevity of life, I want to invite all of us to live life with gratitude. The mercy of the Lord is new every morning. So wake up each morning with a heart full of gratitude. Thank God for the gift of life and the opportunities it brings. Commit to live your life to the praise and glory of God. And when you start the day with thanksgiving, you will see the faithfulness of the Lord and the wonderful blessings of His presence. Second, cherish relationships. The greatest command is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. 
The second is love your neighbor as yourself. So invest time in nurturing your relationships. Tell God you love Him. Tell your loved ones that you love them. Forgive as God has forgiven you. Reconcile and build bridges where needed. Share your testimony so that they may know the gospel and make a decision to have life eternal through Christ Jesus. Time is short. Make it count for God. Third, make a difference. Determine to make a positive impact in the lives of others. Serve the church community in the various ministries. The Sunday school, the youth ministry, cell groups, serve in the worship team as worship leader, co-singer, musicians. Be an intercessor, a scripture reader, a lay reader, a server, an usher, a befriender. Be part of the AV team. Be involved in projects such as Alpha Course and other outreach events, whether in our church or in PECO and around the community of this Jalan Besar area. Lend a helping hand and be a source of kindness and compassion. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Fourth, seek God daily. The Lord is our shepherd. So dedicate time each day to seek God's guidance and wisdom through prayer, meditation, and reading His word. Allow Him to bring us to green pastures and still water each and every day. Surrender your plans to His divine purpose. Surely God, who began the good work within us, will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. And lastly, live with hope. The Lord is our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer, in whom we can take refuge. So embrace each day with hope and optimism. Even in the face of challenges, remember that our hope is in God's unwavering love and eternal promises. Just now we sang the song, He will come and save us. And as we respond to the brevity of life with purpose and faith, brothers and sisters, let us remember the words of Psalm 90 verse 12. Teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. May we, may we be granted the wisdom to live each day with purpose and may our lives be a testament to the beauty that can be found in embracing life's fleeting moments and make it count for God. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for reminding us once again, Lord, the brevity of life and the fleeting moments that time counts, us, that counts every minute and every second. So help us, Lord, to make it count for you. That in doing so, Lord, when we pass on from this earth into heaven, that we may hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we rise for the response song? For indeed, in everything we do, in Christ alone.
克里斯顿了。In Christ alone will I glory. Could pride myself in. Sorry, let's start again. In Christ alone. I place my trust. Still wrong. Let's start again. It's wrong too. In Christ alone will I glory, though I could pride myself in battles won. For I've been blessed beyond measures. And by His strength alone I overcome. Oh, I could stop and count successes, like diamonds in my hands. But those trophies could not equal to the grace by which I stand in Christ alone. And find my glory in the power of the cross. In every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone. In Christ alone. Glory, for only by His grace I am redeemed, and only His tender mercy could reach beyond my weakness to my need. Now I could seek no greater honor than just to know Him. To count my gain but losses, to the glory of my Lord. In Christ alone, I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the Lord. In every victory, let it be said of me. Of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone. Thank you, Pastor James, for that uh, very important reminder for us to live our lives with that purpose, clear purpose for the glory of God. You know, one of the wonderful things, of course, that we all look forward to and long to hear on the day of reckoning is when the Lord would say to us, "Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master." But what does it mean to be good and faithful? This year, our church theme is "Make Me a Servant," and this is what we ask the Lord to help us to to be good and faithful servants. Faithful servant means somebody who does whatever. God asks, has asked, and they do it 100%. They do it to the best, also or to fulfill all that is required of them. If they are given one talent, they are faithful with one talent. If they are given five talents, they are faithful with the five. If they are given ten talents, they are faithful with the ten talents. A good servant is somebody who, of course, in serving God, will give of his or her very, very best to the Lord. That's a good servant. It's not just What they in the past would say half past six can also la mediocrity. We should have that excellent spirit to give of our best to our master. He gave his all when he gave his son to us, and how long with him graciously gave us all things. How do we respond to that? 
And I think today's message is a very important reminder for us to put our hope in the Lord, but to live our lives purposefully, make a difference, cherish relationships. All this is, this is part of and parcel of our vision, actually, of a church. And to look at ways where we can serve the Lord and serve one another. So I want to encourage us in this last quarter of the year, October, that we look at ways where we can play a part, make a difference. Echo Christmas Outreach is coming up. Think of it. Cambodian missions, Vietnam missions. Pray for those who are going, preparing, and support in whatever ways, through your prayers, through your financial contributions. Look at ways where we can reach out to others. There are those who are still doing their exams. Look at ways where we can encourage them as well. <laughs> and there are, a lot of, there are a lot of things that a lot wants to do. But will we be able to look forward to that day when the Lord says, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. As we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed to reaffirm our faith, let these not just be mere words, but truly what we endeavour to enflesh, to live out, and to bear witness to with our lives. Let us say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The collect for the 19th Sunday after Trinity together. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer of seats. Dear Lord Jesus, I do not want to lose what matters most by focusing on momentary things. So please help me. When I'm tired, please strengthen me. When living in a comfortable life seems more appealing than following you unconditionally, please convict and correct me. Give me the strength to trust in you. I know that you are worth living and dying for, but please help me to live for you. Amen. Let us sit on you as we enter now in time of intercession. Father Lord, may you, your spirit unite our hearts in this time of intercession. My presence is in Christ. Let us pray. In John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. For you have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back. Thank you, Lord, for this peace and this hope that we can truly have in you and cling on, even in the midst of the various disasters and chaos that have been taking place all over the world. In Afghanistan, whose earthquakes have a death toll that's similar to the ongoing conflict in Gaza, Israel and the region. We can only imagine the deep suffering and devastating consequences experienced by the people where many lives have been affected and tragically lost. May we continue to intercede fervently and pray for healing and restoration for the afflicted and for a peaceful solution to the devastating crisis. Father Lord, you are the creator of all human beings. We commit those who have lost their loved ones to you, that in their grief, you may comfort them with your peace that surpasses all understanding. Will you heal their souls from bitterness and envelope them with your love? Will you insulate their hearts from hatred and grant them the grace to continue on in living their lives? Would you defend, O oh Lord, the defenseless, would you protect the living from the harm of war and provide for every practical need, including safe passage for those who are providing humanitarian aid? Make us your church, Lord, an instrument of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may sow love, where there is offence, pardon, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy, and where there is pain, consolation. 
Father Lord, will you look upon all who are suffering with your compassion? May your saving grace and mercy be made known throughout all the nations. Let us pray for our nation of Singapore. With the increased awareness of the importance of mental health through the recent World Mental Health Day and even other resources, we want to pray, Father God, for the mental health needs of our nation, especially for our young people. May you, Lord, grant wisdom to those who are involved in meeting these needs. Will you continue and protect, to protect and to guide us as a nation? May all come to know your salvation and to overcome life's challenges and adversities through Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. We want to pray for the Diocese of Singapore and the Parish of the Week, St. Andrew's Community Chapel. Will you grant unity, O Lord, among the leaders and members from the Chinese and English congregations that they will move towards the same goal together and grow as one in the body of Christ? May the church disciple-making enable members to be fervent for you and for the fulfilment of your great commission. We want to pray especially for their outreach work to the community in Tampanese through the Friend Space, a community outreach point, and also the mission work that they are doing in Persat, Cambodia. May you grant grace in providing resources and in supplying their manpower needs in administration, pastoral and chaplaincy work, as well as the Befrienders Ministry in SACH. Father, we pray too for the upcoming Diocesan Day of Prayer and Fasting that's happening on the 4th of November. May you anoint and guide Bishop Titus Chong and the organising committee as they lead us into this time of prayer in the event. Help the participants to focus on you, Lord, and to realign their lives to your will and purpose. We pray for our own Holy Trinity Church. May you, Lord, bless the teachers and the learners of the upcoming baptism classes that are taking place over the next four Sundays. May your Holy Spirit direct the sessions and enable all to know you better and to draw closer to you in their journey of learning uh, to be a disciple of Christ. Let us also continue to pray for the Cambodian missions trip that's taking place from the 28th of November to 4th of December. Will you, Lord, bless the team members in their preparations as they continue to learn and practice communal praises and songs and to prepare for this trip, be it physically, spiritually, mentally or practically? Will you grant them grace, Lord, and enable them to discover the joy and blessings of serving you cross-culturally? Let us now spend a moment of quietness and commit the names of those whom we know are suffering in body, mind and spirit in prayer. Father Lord, we commit these names to you, for you know their sufferings and their needs. May you grant them comfort and healing, courage and hope in their troubles, and true joy in experiencing your salvation. Will you help us too, Lord, to be a good neighbour to these people and in our community, that our lives may truly count and glorify you. All this we ask and pray in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lynn, for leading us in the time of uh, prayer. Uh, is there anyone here who's uh, visiting in our midst uh, this morning? Here for the first time, you could just raise your hand where you are. I'd like to especially welcome a new family into our midst this morning, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ryan Chan. Could you kindly identify yourselves? <laughs> please stand, please stand so we can see you. <laughs> okay, they got married yesterday, okay? So they're Mr. and Mrs. now, properly. <laughs> okay, a quick couple of other notices. Uh, the, you're invited to our All Saints Day Memorial Service on the 5th of November at 5 p.m. So there'll be a choir, it'll be a traditional even song service as well. And for those of you who wish to have your dearly departed loved ones included into a list, we'll be printing the program. Uh, there'll be a list of the names of the dearly departed ones and uh, there'll be an opportunity also during the service for us to give thanks to God for, for these dear ones. Please could you kindly do so uh, by informing the church office by the 29th of October. Next slide. Baptism classes for those who are seeking baptism for yourself or for your children. Uh, please kindly note the dates given. And if you have not as yet done so, please kindly register yourself by today. Thank you. Next slide. The Diocesan Day of Prayer and Fast, which was referred to in the prayers. 
on Saturday, the 4th of November, 9.30 to 11 at the Cathedral New Sanctuary. I'd like to encourage all of you uh, to participate in this as the bishop and others will be involved in leading our diocese as a whole uh, to pray for various things. Next, we'll be watching the video of the week, uh, sorry, Parish of the Week. The video is on St. Andrew's Community Chapel. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness to St. Andrew's Community Chapel. May our church continue to be a house of healing to the nations, reflecting the glory of God, full of grace and truth. Amen. St. Andrew's Community Chapel was birthed in year 2000 when two church planting initiatives, Sime Christian Center from St. Andrew's Cathedral and All Saints Church Passeris Extension merged. In her early days, SACC worshipped in a cinema at East Point Mall and reached out to the residents and community in Sime. St. Andrew's Community Chapel attained parish status in March 2003. SACC Today is a family church with United Chinese and English congregations where members have a close and strong relationship with one another. Since the beginning, SACC's leadership has always valued this and had intentionally planned ministries and events to foster this. SACC holds four worship services in English and Mandarin on Sundays. Members are actively engaged in the service through preaching, teaching, officiating and ushering. SACC has a vibrant ministry to the children, youth and young adults. Our youth from both the English and Mandarin congregations serve and grow up together with their families and are actively involved in ministries such as worship, missions and community outreach. As the anchor parish that provides pastoral care services to St. Andrew's Community Hospital, SACC organizes events and officiates services for patients, caregivers, and staff who seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. The church shows care by befriending the patients during their stay here, and to the staff of St. Andrew's Community Hospital by blessing and encouraging them. To engage the residents in Sime, SACC holds regular visitations and has a monthly coffee corner outreach for residents in Sime. The church will also invite them to be part of our celebrations on festive occasions like Christmas and mid-autumn. Beyond Singapore, SACC is heavily involved in the work in Cambodia by providing hostel accommodation for young people and medical care as well as Bible teaching. St. Andrew's Community Chapel has been grouped with St. Hilda's Church, All Saints Church, Marine Parade Christian Centre and Chapel of Christ the Redeemer under Area Group 7 of the Diocese of Singapore. Area grouping enables our parishes to combine resources and support one another in their labour in the Kingdom. Area Group 7 is one of the seven area groups within the Diocese of Singapore. The diocese is one of the four main denominations of the Protestant churches in Singapore, with a total of 27 local parishes. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> Some of you may have noticed that... Uh, uh, the speaker for our, of our, for our church camp, Raymond Sim, uh, it was in the video, and he's uh, the pastor for the youth and the children at St. Andrew's Community Chapel. Yeah. So their involvement in Cambodia as well, in Posat, began in 1999, 24 years ago, uh, when they, uh, well, basically I, I helped them to, to get involved with the work there, and it has obviously developed over the time. So uh, do, do thank God for uh, also, their faithfulness in, in missions for 24 years, that's quite a stretch as well. Yeah. Uh, next, uh, tithes and offerings in the usual way. And can you invite us all to stand as we share the peace together before we say these words? Can we just take a quick glance at one another on your left, right, front and back? Yeah. Okay, so we know who we're sharing the peace with. Let's say together these words. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up a common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share the peace with one another.
to remain standing for the offering. of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Say to those who are fearful hearted, do not be afraid. The Lord your God is strong with his mighty arm when you call on his name. He will come and say,
Give you thanks, we give you praise, Father Lord, for all you have done for us. Lord, teach us, Father Lord, to, to use our lives for you, Father Lord. Lord, as we depart from here today, teach us, Father Lord, to rededicate our lives to you. Teach us, Father Lord, to learn to serve you, Father Lord, as we continue to be a servant of yours, Father Lord. Lord, we commit this time to your hands, Father Lord, in Jesus' wonderful and precious name we pray, Lord. Amen. <laughs> 